Merhaba arkadaşlar. Öncelikle 2022-2023 yılı için Erasmus Plus bilgilendirme seminerine hoş geldiniz. Biliyorsunuz hali hazırda başvurularımız başladı ve devam ediyor. Bu yılda her yıl olduğu gibi semineri özellikle tam başvuru süreci içerisinde organize etmeyi planlıyorum ki böylece hem başvuru süreci içerisinde sıkıntı yaşayan hem de süreç içerisinde başka şeylerle karşılaşan arkadaşlarımız olursa daha net bir yardımcı olmuş olur. Zaten bunun kaydını da al alacağım. Kaydını da isterseniz sonra YouTube link ile Erasmus Office web sayfasından yine de izleyebilirsiniz. Kaçıran arkadaşlarınız olursa, katılamayan arkadaşlarınız olursa oradan da izleyebilirler. Ama tabii ki birebir şu an burada olmanız daha faydalı olacaktır. En azından sormak istediğiniz sorularınız olursa birebir de de böylece sormanız mümkün olacaktır. Hepinize presenter olarak yaptım zaten. Sorularınızı en son dediğim gibi yarım saat içerisinde alırsam daha iyi olacak. Böylece e, seminer boyunca birçok bilgiden zaten bahsetmiş olacağım. Ama e, gözden kaçırdığım, atladığım bir yer olursa yine sorularınızla cevaplarım onları da. Şimdi öncelikle kısaca şöyle başlayalım. Erasmus Plus nedir? Erasmus nedir? Öğrenciler için nasıl imkanlar var? Ondan bahsedelim kısaca. Öncelikle Erasmus Plus arkadaşlar programın genel adı Avrupa Komisyonu tarafından isimlendirilen programın genel adıdır. Bu Erasmus Plus programının altında tabii onlarca farklı proje tipi var, bir günden farklı projeler var, gençlik değişimleri var, gönüllü projeler var, yüksek öğretimde e, projeler var, öğrencilere yönelik yine yüksek öğretimdeki personellere yönelik olsun, kapasite building projeleri olsun birçok alanda projeler var ve bunların çoğuna da öğrenciler katılabiliyor. Sadece yüksek öğretimde bilinen öğrenci hareketlerinden iki tanesini özellikle bildiğiniz öğrenim hareketliği ve staj hareketliği değil aslında e, harici olarak yararlanabileceğiniz birçok e, exchange programları ya da training kurslar mevcut. Yine Erasmus Plus çatısı altında gerçekleştirilen projelerdir bunlar. E, i̇leride zaten bunlardan da kısaca bir bilgi vereceğim. Konu başlıklarımızı zaten ilan da belirtmiştim bugün. İlk olarak Erasmus öğrenim hareketlerini konuşacağız. Sonrasında Erasmus staj hareketlerini konuşacağız. Bu ikisi, bu iki hareketlilik yüksek öğretimde öğrencilere yapılan, öğrencilere yönelik olan hareketliliklerdir. Ee, ve harici olarak da yine öğrencilere veya gençlere özgü yapılan başka projeler de vardır. Yani sizin belki de bilmediğiniz, farkında olmadığınız çok fazla proje tipi var. Ee, bunlardan çoğu öğrencinin bir haber olduğunu biliyorum. Bu gibi seminerler de sizin için önemli. Böylece e, bilginiz olmuş olur. E, böylece diğer konularda da e, I think Fatma uh, I started in Turkish Fatma but end of the seminar you can ask your question. Is it okay for you? Uh, well, I was planning to do it actually in English. Uh, I think let's turn on to the English. It will be better for everyone. Is it okay? Let's make a deal. If it is okay in English, I'm gonna keep continue in English, guys. Is it okay for everyone? So I think let's keep continue in English. So. Uh, we have also some international students that will be practiced as well for everyone. So you will get informed at least you will get similar to the topics we are talking about, okay? Because you will face kind of uh, similar words a lot during the Erasmus process. It will be better to speak in English, okay? As we suppose the language or the seminar was going to be in English, but at the beginning and when I saw the most the and not mostly actually all of the students were from Turkey. I started doing it in Turkish, but let's just turn on to the English and keep continue with English. And then if you couldn't understand any part of the seminar, I mean for the Turkish student especially, if you miss some part of that, you can ask your question in Turkish end of the seminar, okay? I think we are deal. All right. Let's keep continue. So first one, as I told you, which is the 
Erasmus studies for students. This is the first key action which is held in, in the higher education institution. The second one, which is a traineeship for students. So let's keep continue with studies one for students. As you know, right now the application is already open and you are able to apply that. And what is exactly Erasmus studies for students? It means a student who is enrolled to the university in any cycle of the university. What I mean with cycle? With cycle, I mean bachelor, master, or PhD. You must be a part of this three cycle. You must be as an enrolled student in order to benefit from the Erasmus Studies Mobility for Students. So, what is the purpose of this mobility? The purpose of this mobility, as a student of your host university, you are able to do studies like one semester or two semester in any other program country that your university has agreement with them. So with the purpose of the studies mobility, students will take one semester or two semester in abroad in the partner institution. And students after back to the Turkey, they will receive a transcript from the receiving institution and they will continue their education when they back to the host university, I mean the home university. So the next step, let's get started with the next step. What is the next step? Right now is the first step to apply in Erasmus Studies Mobility. After the application of the Studies Mobility, there will be an English exam. The English exam, exam will be carried out into section. Which one is writing section? Second one is speaking section. In order to attend speaking section, you have to get 65 score and above from the writing exam. Otherwise, you will not be able to attend speaking section. After the writing exam, the list of the students who are awarded to attend speaking exam, it will be published, it will be posted on the Erasmus office website. You will be able to see over there and all the details will be shared in the announcement. As you may see, the exam dates already published also on the announcement. Uh, as I remember, uh, end of the uh, announcement there is already written the exam dates for the March I, as I remember 10th March is the writing exam and 7th March March is the speaking exam so the writing exam will be face to face at the campus at the Sutuja campus and the speaking section speaking exam will be online so you have to apply I mean you have to attend the writing exam face to face at Sutuja campus only in Sutija campus and speaking exam will be online. Anyway, let's keep continue. For the next step, after the exam, from the exam, you have to get both of the combined exam. I mean the first writing section and the speaking section. You have to get 65 score. After 65 score, which is mean you are awarded you are eligible to pass the exam. It means not you are awarded to attend Erasmus Mobility or it means not you will receive absolutely found because the found and the placement depends on your GPA score and depends on your English exam score. As a result of your English exam and the According to your GPA, the current GPA, which I'm talking the last semester, the general GPA. Okay. We will take 50% of your GPA and 50% of your English score. And then we will combine according to that score, there will be a standing list. And according to that standing list, uh, students will be nominated or placed with found, without found, or they will be maybe in the backup list, 
or maybe they will not be able to place it. There are four options. The first one, founded place, non-founded, on the blacklist, on the black, uh, on the standby list as well, and not place it. After the, all this, when students, I mean for the students who are eligible or who are awarded to attend Erasmus Mobility, the final list will be published on the Erasmus Office website as well. After the final list published on the Erasmus Office, it means the nomination will start after that. What does it mean the nomination? Nomination means for the awarded student who are awarded to attend Erasmus Studies Mobility, we will start to nominate them according to the preference list of student who has filled out during the application form. So what is the preference list? Most of students, they just mix the universities. They don't know how to choose the universities. First, you have five university preference list. You can add maximum five universities, which is mean you are eligible to choose from the partner, from the agreed universities, five universities. Depends on your program. Maybe your program even doesn't have five agreements. So, which is mean if the, if you don't have like five agreements or if the, you know, we have just two or three agreements, you can just add two or three agreements in that case, unfortunately. So, after the preference list, we will check the score of the student. And if the score of the student is higher, we will start to nominate, we will start to pl place with a standard list according to the preference list. For instance, if you have written on the first line X university, and if you have written on the second line B university, if your score is higher than other students who has also selected X university, you will be priority. You will have priority to be nominated that first preference list. And if you are not eligible, I mean, if your score is not eligible to be nominated that first preference, you will be nominated to the second university, which you have listed on the application. Most of students, they are just uh, comparing the university and they mix part of the quotas as well of these universities. They think that the quotas of the university is mean we have agreement with that university in that quota. Yes, that's right, but we, it's mean we can only send students like, let's, I'm, I'm gonna make it more clear. Let's assume that I have an agreement with one of the university from the partner and I have agreement with a five quota of that program. Like, let's assume that economics with that university. I have economics with that university, with X university, and the maximum I can send five students that university, which is you will list also, you will see on the partner details when you search for partners. That means we can send maximum that quota to that university and receive that quota from that university. It doesn't mean that is the quota university will send as a founded student that university because the quota of the faculties and the programs are different. We have also published on the announcement. You will be able to see the quotas of the universities, also graduate schools. The quotas of the published on the announcement, it means that we are able to send that quotas as a found student, as a found place at student. So that's why we do not send according to quotas of the agreement we have with universities. When you check the, our agreements, we have almost 1,000 quota with the total universities. It doesn't mean that we are sending 1,000 students to the Erasmus, okay? Do not mix that. And second part, after the nomination, if you, are, if you have awarded to attend Erasmus, we will start your nomination. So how it starts, 
Before the nomination, when you award it, we will make the orientation program as we do, do right now as a seminar. We will also organize the orientation program for the outgoing student. You will be informed about all the details of the Erasmus. So Erasmus totally, Erasmus Studies Mobility has totally three steps. The first steps is before the mobility, second steps is during the mobility, and third steps is after the mobility. So you may ask, what are those steps exactly? Let's make it more clear. The first step is before the mobility, which is mean you apply and you awarded, you get awarded to attend Erasmus Mobility. After that, the nomination starts and we inform the university and uh, you start to prepare your documents for the mobility and you send your documents, you make your application to that university and you fill out your learning agreement, you fill out other application form in order to complete your application to that university. And then the visas process starts when you received your acceptance letter from the partner university or the nominated university, you will start the visa process. Before the visa process, you have to receive your acceptance letter. Otherwise, you are not able to start the visa process because the, the consulate and the embassy will ask for that. When you receive your acceptance letter from the partner university, which is mean you are able to start visa process. That's part also before the mobility. And after the visa process, when you completed your visa, when you received your visa, we will start to make your found agreement, your grant agreement. And we will sign it and you will, you will be able to start to your trip to the partner university. And for the second step, which is during the mobility, during the mobility is kind of at drop peak, as you know, in our university. During that process, when you go to the partner university, you may face kind of problems, maybe like uh, changing the course, maybe dealing with a uh, course choosing process for the orientation. And you have to figure out all this process during the mobility. Let's assume that you have completed your choosing, you have pre prepared your learning agreement before the mobility. But when you arrive to the university, maybe one of the course or maybe a few of the course has been closed or they didn't open that course. So it means you have to change your courses. And how you will do that? You will do that on the during the mobility part. And for the after the mobility, for the after the mobility, when you have completed your Erasmus mobility, you will get your transcript and you will get your confirmation certificate from the university and you will back to the home university, you will start the recognition process. In order to start your recognition process, first you have to receive your transcript from the partner university. And during the, all this process, at the beginning of the studies mobility and the end of the studies mobility, you will be in contact on, uh, with Erasmus office and you will be in contact with your departmental coordinator. Each departmental coordinator has a coordinator. So you have to keep continue your process, I mean your course choosing process with your coordinator and get confirmation from the Erasmus office. And Second mobility, let's talk about the second mobility, which is traineeship mobility for student. The traineeship mobility will start in March, by the way. Uh, we will open application at the first week of March for the traineeship one. And you may ask, what about the conditions? What about the rules of the traineeship? It's the same, guys. There are some, a few, Basic difference, that's all. Firstly, during the March, you have to apply traineeship mobility and then you will have exam again for the traineeship mobility because each mobility has exclusive codas and each mobility will be founded differently. So that's why in order to make the fair selection process, we are doing exams 
different. But if you have attended to the studies mobility or if you have applied studies mobility, if you have passed the English exam of the studies mobility, you are able also use that score for traineeship mobility. But do not forget you are only able to choose one of that mobility if you apply both of them at the same time. Because when you nominated, when you awarded to attend one of them, in that case, the second application will be minus 10. It will start with minus 10. So in that case, your place will go down. So that's why maybe you will decrease your chance to be nominated with found. So that's why you have to decide which mobility is much appropriate for you and you have to choose the best one, okay? I mostly recommend the um, last class students the trainship mobility, but uh, for the other class, uh, I would recommend to choose studies one. Anyway, let's keep continue for the traineeship. For the traineeship one, after the application, as I said, you will have exam again. And the exam, I mean, the, it will be two sections again, as uh, studies one, the first one is writing, and second one is speaking section. The score is same, by the way. You will take the first step, writing section, and then in order to attend the speaking section, you have to get also 65 score and above. Otherwise, you will not be able to attend speaking section as uh, we did in the studies one. As a combined score of the both section, if you received 65 score and above, this means that you are passed that English exam. But of course, as I said, the English score is not enough and also GPA it's not enough. It must be as much as higher both of them. Your English result and your GPA. In order to be founded student, you have to keep higher as much as you can. Because as you know, we are make a standing list. We make a list according to that scores. After that, you will be nominated with found student or not student. Okay, what else, what is difference from the studies for the traineeship one? There is one more difference. As you know, for studies one, we have already agreement with universities, but for the traineeship one, we do not make agreement with companies. For the traineeship one, you have to find your own place. You have to find the company which you plan to make traineeship. You have to apply and you have to find your company. And during the application process for the traineeship, you have to uh, apply and you have to complete your application as written with the, all details on the announcement. After the application, if you have got an acceptance letter before the application or during the application, let's say until end of the application as a deadline, if you upload your acceptance letter that you have accepted for the traineeship from the another uh, company, it's mean you will receive 10 plus points to the total score. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it again. When you receive your acceptance letter before the application or before the or during the application for the traineeship one, when you upload that acceptance letter, you will get extra 10 points. Okay, this extra 10 points will be added to the total score. So you have to find your own place where you can find. We will share all the links on the announcement. You can search for that. And also you can search uh, or you can look for from the websites. There are a lot of websites you can or type directly to the companies that you are interested to work or that you are interested to do a traineeship. You have to keep contact with them. But if you are planning to do traineeship in any university, we have some agreements with universities. That's around uh, 15 or 20 universities. We have agreement for the traineeship one. But the traineeship opportunities for our partner universities 
that's belong to them. You can apply, but decision up to partner university. If they need traineeship in any department, they may accept you. Otherwise, maybe you are not interested to work at university. If you are not interested to work at university, in that case, you have to look for company uh, that's related to your department or your program that you are studying right now. And after the traineeship mobility, uh, there is also three steps and that, uh, that happen for the studies one, before the mobility, during the mobility, and after the mobility. And before the mobility, if you have received your acceptance letter, you should start to prepare your learning agreement for the traineeship one. And when you uh, complete your documents, you will start the visa process again. And then during the mobility, if, if there is anything happened during the mobility, you have to update your during the mobility part. And then if you have uh, anything else to do, after the mobility, you will complete your after the mobility part. And for the online application uh, system, as you know, on the digitalization process, right now the VR stepping in Erasmus without paper. So what does it mean Erasmus without paper? We do not create paper anymore. Everything will be digital, everything will be online. During your Erasmus process, from the application to the end of the process of the mobility, everything must be completed online. We do not receive any paper from via email, uh, from submitting by hand, from submitting to the office directly. You have to submit, you have to upload all the required documents for the mobility to the online system. Uh, as I know, most of you uh, are familiar to the, our system, which is using um, Erasmus port. We are calling Erasmus port that system. As I know, most of you have already a member of that and you already maybe applied for the studies one. Uh, if you are familiar to the system, you have to complete all the process in that system. Not only that system, that system is belong to us, but partner universities has also different system. Sometimes you will complete some application, some forms via their systems. So in that case, you have to be in contact with our Erasmus port system and uh, familiar to the partner university system. So during the, all the mobility, you will use only digital and online systems. And I'm going to also show you on the Erasmus port online system how you will apply to the Erasmus. As I received emails from the students, most of students are asking about the application form, how I can find the application form. But as I realized, most of students, they don't read the announcement. Everything is written clearly on the announcement. The application form, which is you fill out, and it's written also announcement. When you complete, when you fill it out your application, the online application, and system just pop up a warning. Do not forget to download your application form, sign it, and upload to the system. This is the warning will be given by the system when you complete your application. This is the application form. And when you complete it, you will be able to download PDF version of that. And then you will sign it and you will upload to the system. It's not rocket science as I see, right? Anyway, for the next um, part, as I seen most of emails, it's written also, uh, should I upload transcript from the OBS. We do not accept unofficial transcript which is created by the OBS system. OBS system just creates unofficial transcript. As written also on the announcement, we have to, you have to provide official transcripts from student affairs that must be in English, by the way. But if you are, I mean, in your city or in your hometown, if you are not able to take your transcript from the student affairs 
as I know, you are also able to download from eDevlet. So eDevlet is also available to provide transcript in both language, English and Turkish. You can also upload that. We will accept that, don't worry. But later on, when you come, you, you need to update the English one from the student affairs, okay? And for the master students, let's talk about the master and PhD students. For the master and PhD students, as you may know, the application conditions, the first one is, uh, which is your GPA must be 2.50. If your GPA, your general GPA is not 2.50, is not about that, you are not eligible to apply. But this is for bachelor students is 2.20. For the master and the PhD students, this is 2.50. And I received most of emails from master students. Uh, do we are able to, or do we are eligible to do Erasmus during the thesis? Yes, you can do that, but please keep consider during the thesis process, you will not be able to defend your thesis. You will not be able to take your thesis. You have to take extra courses because Erasmus doesn't accept recognition of the courses to the thesis, okay? The thesis ECTS is 60 ECTS and the course ECTS is five or six or four. How you can match those to each other? And also, you have to defend your thesis at your home university, okay? Do not forget that. Another part, even though if you would you like to do Erasmus studies one, you have to keep consider that your study process will be automatically extend because you will take extra courses in home university and in partner university. When you back, you will take your thesis and you will start to write it and defense it. Okay? This is most of important part for the master and PhD students. For the PhD, that's much more flexible because uh, they have also kind of chance to do like one month uh, Erasmus mobility. They have kind of opportunities as well. They can also go for research, but for the master students, it's not eligible, unfortunately. And uh, I will share my screen with you. And uh, I will start to talk about with the application form. We can do it together. Maybe if any one of you is volunteer, if he or she didn't apply yet for the Erasmus Studies one, we can do it together and we can apply together in online right now. So other students will be able to observe that and they will learn how we are doing that. Is there any volunteer? Now, is there any volunteer would you like to apply for studies one? Well, of course, if he or she didn't apply, yes. Okay, I think no one. Let me first share my screen. Mm. So are you able to see my screen right now? Okay. So is there any volunteer? Would you like to apply for studies one? Because I will need username. Does anyone wants to be a volunteer during the application?
Okay, Sena, if you share with us your username, let's get started with you. Do you have account on the Erasmus port? If you have micro, does your micro is open? You can talk, Sena, directly. Sena, are you able to talk? Okay, uh, we can keep continue then with the writing. Can you share with us your username? Uh, and do you have account, by the way, on the Erasmus port? Okay. Okay, so let's just use your username. Zsena.fazla. By the way, guys, I have seen another problem. Let me mention also about that. During the registration to the Erasmus port, during the creating an account, as I have received a lot of emails and I have seen a lot of misopen accounts because they still don't know, I mean, most of students, they don't know their email addresses. Your email addresses is as written on the uh, before the registration, before the create account on the Erasmus port, it's written over there as well. You have to create your account with name dot surname at Istanbul Tijaret dot edu dot tr, not Tijaret. Okay, Istanbul Tijaret it belongs to students and Tijaret dot edu dot tr belongs to staff. Okay. You have to create your account with Istanbul Tijaret.edu.tr. And also, the OBS system and Erasmus port are integrated to each other. You can't change the password. Your password will be which is you are using for OBS system. You have to use the same password for the Erasmus port as well. Otherwise, you will not be able to make registration or to open an account or to log into the system okay so i'm gonna right now login with the with the system okay let me Firstly, let's look for Sena. Does she has account? Say John Sena. Say John Sena. Yeah, here you are. Okay. So I'm gonna use Erasmus port in Turkish, but I'm gonna explain in English. Okay. So in this case, you will be familiar. You for both of system, for the Turkish students and the for foreign students. So right now I'm in the system of the Sena. So Sena, did you apply to the Erasmus studies one? Okay, let's do it together. So other students will also monitor it, okay? Okay, right now we are on the page of the Sena. So and as you hear, you will see the application here and application, my application over here as well. Doesn't matter which one, which one you are will click. When if you click this one, you will see studies application. And then you will click studies application. As you see over here, it says application it's open and the the deadline is 21 of February. Let's click on for the application. So as you see, automatically your username will be copied to the OBS. Maybe Sena already inserted before. So let's search. Let's continue. 
as you see, the Erasmus port system just pulled out all the information you have from the OBS system and integrated automatically to the Erasmus port system. Your student number, your cycle, are you bachelor, master, or PhD? It automatically comes. Your faculty doesn't come automatically because uh, some students have double degree. So in that case, they will see both of degrees as well. They have to choose which one they would you like to apply. So if you are studying double degree, you have to choose only one of them. You are not available to apply from both of them. You can apply only from one of them. Okay. So, Sena, what is your program exactly? Okay, business faculty and international trade. Okay, let's continue then. Uh, let's choose business faculty over here and uh, international trade over here. So which class you are? First, okay. Let's do it together. Here is the first class, okay. And your GPA right now, as you see over here, 3.27, okay. Which is mean you are eligible to apply. If your GPA is lower than 2.20, it's mean you are not eligible to apply for that, okay? So let's keep continue. But I don't have any photos of the Senna, but maybe we can just find something else uh, to upload there. And so right now I'm gonna upload a regular photo in order to continue for the application. Later on, I will delete it. Okay, Sena, is it okay for you? All right. So I will just choose one photo, maybe like, let's say this one, like the seminar photo. Okay. And then the other parts, I mean, the personal informations are already inserted to the system, as you see. And then, so let's continue here. The first part, I'm going to also explain each of them individually, okay? So the first question means, are you I mean, do you have a double nationality? Do you plan to do your mobility in your double nationality? Let's assume that you have double nationality. Uh, maybe you have like a nationality from Germany. Maybe you have also from Turkey. If you plan to do your mobility in Germany, and if you say yes to this question, it means you will receive minus 10 points. If you do not have kind of double nationality, even though if you have double nationality and if you are not planning to do mobility in that country, you can say no, okay? And for this part, uh, if, you, if you are part of the, I mean, from the army and uh, if you are part of the uh, Weimar students or if your father and your maybe Mm, any part of the, your parents are injured or something happened from the during the army if you are part of that of that uh, parents students you will say yes or no if you are not you can say no because this one will receive extra fund but you have to provide related documents of course in that case okay and this sec uh, third one third one it says do you get any support from the government, like care, like uh, accommodation? If you are part of the system that need to be carried uh, by the government, because if you are kind of uh, citizenship, 
that in that case you will receive also extra fund if you are not you can say no Sena I'm just saying no for you but I hope it's it's right <laughs> is it do I'm going well Sena okay so the third one as you see there is a clause and again from the social service from the government according to this clause if you are receiving any extra from the government or in order to survive according to to this clause which is 2828 which is social service uh, clause and the government provide extra fund for you if you are kind of uh, i mean if you are getting kind of uh, assistance from the government as a support from the government you can say yes if not you can say no sena what about you is it yes or no let's see no okay and the next one and this one if you have any disadvantage case i mean if you are physically or mentally have this advantage you can mention about that here if you do not have you can say no if you have you can say yes okay this clause i mean uh, it's important if you have kind of disadvantage case you will receive also extra fund and extra point as well Sena, what about your situation? Okay. Let's keep continue with no. Okay. Sena, as you see over here, we need your personal email address. Can you just type it us? Can you write it? Sena, do you hear me? Do you have any personal email address, Sena? Okay. So I'm going to copy that directly. And I'm going to write your phone number as a like maybe like this okay your address i'm gonna type something generally in order to continue and here and this part in any urgent case you have to mention about the urgent case person in this part you have to write name of the person in urgent case that we need to contact and his or her number okay and let's say like something like a number and like this and let's start continue like that if you have any one more i mean stuff you can add also over here if you do not have any extra person you don't need to fill out the second line okay the compulsory part which is the first line if you do not want to add second one you don't need to add second one okay and over here so it's mean right now we will start to make our preference list and before that here is a question it's asking have you ever attended Erasmus program before and if yes, you have to say yes. If no, you have to say no. Sena, as I said, you are the first class, so in that case, you have never attended before, right? And on this part, as you see, on the red warning, which is mean compulsory, in this part, you have to choose at least one university. And but 
if you would like to choose five university, that's up to you. Let's get started with the first one. As you see over here, according to the program of the Sena she's studying, you will see agreements over here, which is listed. And you can choose which one that you are most interested in. Most of the students asking how I will make my preference list. That's up to you. Which country you are most interested in? Or uh, where do you, would you like to do your Erasmus? Or maybe you can check the universities according to the course offered in English. Or maybe the location, maybe the course recognition process. You may check the courses are they matched to your program or not? Or maybe uh, depends on your interests. Or maybe you would like to learn um, a second language or maybe Italian, Spanish or German. You can choose according to that conditions, okay? That's totally belongs to you. Let's assume that like a first one is a Bremer, Bremen and uh, Italy, let's, okay. There is a warning, for instance, for the Italy, as you see. So in some uh, partner universities, we have some notes has been written on the description part. And you will also pop up, you will see the pop up about that. And in that case, you, can, you have to make sure that university provide English courses or if they do not provide English courses, you may change your preference list or you can add another university. But keep consider that we are doing our agreement only if the university has English courses in that program because you will not take any other language courses except of the English. But if you know Spanish, German, Dutch or Italian, of course, you can take also those kind of courses which is taught in that uh, home country language or host country language. You can take it if you don't have any other language, you can just choose the related universities for providing English courses. Or let's choose Colonel de Grot, for instance, and uh, what else, Poznan. Okay, I have chosen three right now, Sena. But I'm, I'm gonna not I'm gonna complete your application, but I will open it again in order to update it. You can update it, okay? So right now I have chosen three university, and later on Sena will update it. Let's keep continue. So over here, it's written which term you would you like to go. You would you like to go one year, which is mean two semester, or you would you like to go only autumn term? or you would like to go only for spring term. Okay, so in that case, you will choose which one is much interesting for you. Maybe you will choose like uh, fall term only. Maybe you will choose just spring term. If you are interested in like one year, you can choose one year, but please keep consider as written on the announcement because of the mm, lack of the grant and the fund we received this year, you may not be supported for two semesters with that fund, okay? In order to send much students to the Erasmus, we may only support one semester full funded, okay? Right now, I'm gonna choose full term in order to continue. And, and over here, it's written, Except of my preference list, I'm accepting to be nominated to any other university. What does it mean? It means if you have not nominated or if you have not placed any of these third, I mean three university, so in that case, we will nominate you to the another university that we have agreement in that program. It's mean. But mostly we will take into consideration your preference list. And mostly, if you award to attend Erasmus, and most probably you will be nominated to the, your preference list, okay? In this part, you can say always yes, okay? Because if something happens, let's assume that uh, the partner university will not receive 
students maybe because of the COVID, maybe uh, they will continue online. They will not accept any students in physical. Maybe they will continue their education hybrid. So you don't want to do hybrid or online. So in that case, we will change your university, okay? And here, I also received many questions regarding to the English exam in this part. And uh, for the foreign language informations, as written on the announcement, if you would like to accept from the English exam, which is, will be carried out for the Erasmus, you have to upload an official result, English result. We have written what kind of English result we are accepting. Uh, I have received some questions from the students. They are asking, do you accept preparation school result? No, we do not accept preparation school exam result. That's not official exam result, okay? What are the official exam result? Uh, for instance, YDS, or uh, which is called YAKDIL, or IELTS, or TOEFL, or uh, Cambridge Academic, or PTA, or kind of uh, exam, etc. And uh, here, if you have kind of document, you can say, yes, I have that document. If you have it, you will upload to the system. If you do not have, you will choose this second section, which is says, I will take the English exam, which is will be carried out by university during the Erasmus application process, okay? And here, the English, that's standard, for the foreign language exam, if you say, it, yes, I have a document, I have an official result, you have to choose which one of them you have. And you have to upload document during the application form when you fill it out, okay? If you do not have, and in that case, you will choose Erasmus Plus proficiency exam, okay? And uh, this one is the same. You don't need to do anything over here, okay? And as I said, if you have kind of score, when you choose the certificate and this line will be open and you will be able to write your score over here as well, okay? Yes, this is the important part, Erasmus application form. So I received a lot of emails from students, where is the application form, as I said. So Erasmus application form, which is Right now, we are filling out. As I said, you have to complete it, and then you will be able to download it and upload it. As you see over here, it's not compulsory to upload during the application. But over here, you will see it's written compulsory. If you do not upload this document, you will not be able to complete your application form, okay? So language certificate, as you see also, is not compulsory. If you have it, you can upload it. If you do not have, you will choose Erasmus English exam. That's it. For the transcript records, as I said, you have to upload transcripts over here. Let's choose um, right now this in order to continue. The biometric science and this one. Yeah, the last part, you will see some warning over here and which says, I confirm that the information I have shared or I have committed all true and, and then I accept them. You will click on this, okay? Also, during the application form, I have written and I have accept all the conditions and pro cross, okay? You have to also choose this one. When you complete your application, let's complete now. Okay, over here, you will see the PDF. Okay, so the PDF, you will be able to download it. But before the downloading, as you see still, it's yellow. It's a draft. It means you have not completed your application yet. 
when you do such a things we will not receive your application okay please be careful about this part it says complete okay if you do not complete it's still draft if you leave it like this your application will not be delivered to us okay and you will miss this application okay when you complete complete and the system will give you a warning okay if you are filling out the system will give you in turkish if you fill out in turkish version you will see the turkish warning if you are filling out in english you will see the english warning okay which says after completing you will not be able to make any change any update are you sure that you would like to complete and also it says do not forget to download your application form and sign it and upload to the system okay when you click it and as you see this state right now turn it on green which is confirmed and your application has been completed from now on you are not able to make any update if you made any mistake as a huge mistake or any important mistake you have to inform us we will open your application and then you will be able to revise it or update it okay okay i think up to now everything goes well is it clear guys okay so i'm gonna stop sharing my screen okay we can keep continue now with the questions if you have your questions just you can raise your hand i can give you permission you can talk you can ask me directly your question if you want you can ask me uh, via typing to the chat board okay so anyone Okay. You can you can talk, Ejenor. I think your micro is available, right? Evet hocam, available. Okay. Türkçe konuşabilirim, değil mi? Yes, sure. If you want, you can talk ee, Turkish. Hocam, ben dördüncü sınıfın ikinci döneme gitmek istiyorum ve ders seçimlerime baktığım zaman e, Türkiye iş diye bir dersim var benim. E, partner hmm. üniversitelerde de hiçbiriyle eşleşmiyor. O zaman nasıl bir şey uygulamam gerekiyor? Bu durumda mümkün oldukça seçmeli derslere yoğunlaşman gerekir. Döndükten sonra da o dersi alttan alabilirsin. Ama benim okulum bitmiş oluyor. O dersi veremeyeceğim o zaman. Onu tekrar vermem gerekiyor değil mi? Okulum bitemiyor yani. Evet. Bak, okulum bitmiyor. O dersi vermeden zorunlu dersin ise o dersi vermeden kaçıncı sınıfsın şu an? Dördün, şu an üçüm ama ben dördüncü sınıfın e, bahar döneminde Hı -hı. gitmek istiyorum. O zaman yaz okuluna kalabilir. O ders yaz okulunda açılırsa yaz okulunda da alabilirsin. Kalmazsa e, maalesef ya okulun uzar ya alttan alırsın ya da tek ders ücretiyle o dersi alıp vermek zorundasın eğer eşleştirmezse yani. Anladım hocam. Teşekkür ederim. Rica ederim. So anyone else? Do you have any question? So there was a question on the the students who are studying international trade they are also available to choose from business administration so uh, yes you are available but i i have already opened most of uh, universities to the students so you are able to apply i think you have enough 
uh, universities right now to apply. If you would you like to change even though, we can change it after the application or if you have awarded, after the awarded, you will be able to give the petition and we can change your university except one of the universities that you would you like to go from your preferences, okay? E devletten alınan İngilizceleri dediğim gibi e, yükleyebilirsiniz direkt. İki dilde yazıyoruz. Sadece dikkat etmeniz gereken genel not ortamınızın güncel olup olmadığı. Gerçi sistem zaten otomatik olarak çekiyor. O yüzden sıkıntı yok. Eğer örtüşmüyorsa birbiriyle zaten onları ona göre dikkat alacağız. So for the Zeynep Temel, how many people is the grand quota? So I have already shared the quota on the announcement Zeynep. If you check, you will see all the faculties has individual quotas. So we are sharing as a faculty quotas. Why we are sharing like that? In order to give more chance to other programs, because as you know, we have a lot of programs at our university, but most of programs, they do not apply or they do not send students. So in that case, we determinate faculty quotas and if the programs from the one of the faculty is a higher than another faculty or other program we just share quotas or we divide quotas according to agreements according to uh, ranking of the students according to uh, achievement of the students we share the open extra quotas to the other programs Uh, Tuğba, tek transkript yeterli mi yani? Evet, tek transkript yeterli arkadaşlar. Mailde eğer dediğim gibi daha önce söylenmiş olabilir. Eğer İngilizce değilse kabul edilmez. Eğer İngilizce alabiliyorsanız yani iki dilde en son e, yanlış hatırlamıyorsam biri 60'tı bana iki dilde de oluşturabiliyorsunuz E-Devlet'ten. Sıkıntı yok, yükleyebilirsiniz. Eğer Türkçe ise olmaz demişimdir muhtemelen. Evet, PDF'i imzaladıktan sonra tarayıp fotoğrafını değil arkadaşlar. Fotoğraf kesinlikle kabul etmiyoruz. Her şey PDF formatında olmalı. Telefonlarınızda artık akıllı telefonlarda driver var. Driver'dan oradan tarayıp PDF formatında sisteme yükleyebilirsiniz. Çok kolay bir şekilde. Kübra Kaya, hocam banka hesabımızda belli bir miktarda paran olması gerekiyor mu? Kübra bence şu an bunun için düşünme. Tabii ki olursa iyi olur. Eğer gitmeye hak kazanırsan kesin. Çünkü bizim verdiğimiz hibe bir destek hibesi. Bütün masraflarınız tam dört dörtlük karşılamıyor. Bu sebeple de tabii ki bazı masraflarınızı kendini, kendiniz karşılamak zorunda kalacaksınız. Gideceğiniz zamanda da belli bir miktar yüre hesabınızda paranızın olması sizi destekler tabii ki. Eğitim için yaz dönemi gidebilir, gidebilir miyiz? Yaz dönemi arkadaşlar e, mümkün değil ama genelde şöyle İtalya ve Almanya üniversitelerinde eğitim yazında sürüyor, uzun oluyor. Genelde Ağustos sonunda bitiyor, Mart'ta başlayıp Ağustos'un sonunda bitiyor. Eğer öyle bir şey düşünüyorsanız Almanya'da İtalya seçebilirsiniz. PDF Reyhan, PDF kısmında geçen sene başvurum gözüküyor. PDF'e tıklayınca bunu düzeltmek için ne yapabilirim? Geçen sene ile ilgili başvurum Gözüküyor derken bu seneki başvurular farklı. Geçen seneki başvurular farklı Reyhan. Daha önce başvurmuş olman, geçmiş sene, geçen sene başvurmuş olman tekrar başvuramayacağın anlamına gelmez. Bu yüzden de şu an açık olan başvuru döneminden başvuru yapman gerekiyor. Zaten başvuruların içerisinde de kendin görüntüleyebileceksin. 2022-2023 başvurularımda daha çok işlem yapacaksın. Bir önceki başvurun geçersiz olacak. Başka sorusu olan var mı? Zeynep'in sorusu var. Sadece güz dönemini tercih edersek sonradan bahar dönemine de devam edebilir miyiz? Sadece güz dönemini başlayıp sonradan bahar dönemini uzatmak isterseniz arkadaşlar hareketliliğin sona ermesinden en az bakın en az bir ay öncesinden 
bizim uzatma talebi extension formumuz var. O extension formunu doldurup bize iletmeniz gerekiyor. Sisteme yüklemeniz gerekiyor ve bildirmeniz gerekiyor maille. Ondan sonra extension uzatma talebiniz değerlendirilir. Ona göre hibeli veya hibesiz olarak kabul edilir. Veya edilmez. Başka sorusu olan var mı? Geçen seneki Erasmus puanınızı bu sene kullanamıyorsunuz. Çünkü hareketlikler ve projeler, dönemler birbirinden farklı. O yüzden de bir önceki yılın puanı o yıla özgü. O yüzden de bu sene yeniden başvurmak zorundasınız. Yeniden sınava girmek zorundasınız. Eğer transkriptiniz İngilizce değilse arkadaşlar kesinlikle İngilizce transkript yükleyin. Değilse sistemde güncelleyebilirsiniz. Sisteme şu an yükleyebilirsiniz. Yani deadline'a kadar İngilizce transkriptinizi yükleyebiliyorsunuz. E-Devlet'ten de yani İngilizce iki dilde oluşturulabiliyorsa dediğim gibi oluşturuluyor diye biliyorum. Onu da yükleyebilirsiniz tabii ki. Hibe alamayan yani hibeli olarak yerleşemeyen öğrenciler tabii ki gitmekten vazgeçebilirler ya da zaten gidemezler ya da isterlerse hibesiz gitmek istediklerine dair dilekçelerini verip hibesiz gidebilirler. Hibeli yerleşmiş olsanız da vazgeçebilirsiniz dilekçe verip. Bunun için de zaten bir vazgeçme dönemi olacak bir, bir ay gibi. Bundan sonra da tabii ki vazgeçebilirsiniz. Veya e, vazgeçtiğiniz takdirde de tabii ki gelecek sene başvurduğunuzda eksi 5 puan kesilir. Ama yerleşip de daha sonra vazgeçerseniz yani vazgeçme tahlilleri dışında vazgeçerseniz bu sefer de eksi 10 puan kırılır gelecek sene. Bu karşı şimdi Baran Dille İtalya ve Almanya'da yaz dönemi evet okullar devam ediyor geç bitiyor. Burada gideceğiniz üniversiteye bağlı. Siz diyelim ki bahar döneminde gittiniz Mart'ta başladınız Almanya'da bir üniversiteye Ağustos'un sonunda falan bitiyor. Okulunuz zaten bitmiş oluyor buraya dönüyorsunuz aslında zamanında oradayken de derslerinizi seçebilirsiniz burada. Sıkıntı olmaz yani. Ağustos'un sonu gibi falan okulunuz bitmiş oluyor yani. Aslında kayıt yenilemeleri başlamadan dönmüş oluyorsunuz kendi ülkenize. Ders seçimlerinde de ders seçimlerinde zaten o ülkenin sistemlerinden yapıyorsunuz. Uçak ve vize masraflarınızı evet kendiniz karşılıyorsunuz arkadaşlar ama e, genelde e, vize masraflarını bazı konsolosluklar alıyor. Bazıları almıyor. Bunun için de learn agreement'larınızı vize başvuru sürecinde evraklarınızın içerisinde koyduğunuzda Erasmus kapsamında gittiğinizde belirttiğinizde çoğu elçilik ve büyük konsolosluklar almıyor. İki dönem okumuyorsunuz. Sadece okulun dönemi yani yazın hani okumak isteyenler olduğu için söyledim. Akademik dönemleri farklı oluyor o ülkelerin. Geç başlıyor ve geç bitiyor sadece. İki dönem okumamış oluyorsunuz. Bir dönem okuyorsunuz sadece. Yeşil pasaportun olsa daha vize almak zorunda. Evet yeşil pasaportun dahi olsa vize almak zorundasın. Çünkü Erasmus hareketleri 90 gün üzerinde olduğu için ekstra vize başvurusu yapıyorsunuz. Yani D tipi vizeye başvuru yapıyorsunuz arkadaşlar. Yeşil pasaportun olması vizeye başvuru yapmayacağız anlamına gelmiyor. Başka sorusu olan? Hayır. Yani bu mümkün değil. Yani kendi üniversitede iki dönem okumak demek. Zaten akademik yılı tamamlamak demek. Bu da akademik yılı tamamlanması da Haziran'ın sonu demek. Yani ortaları demek. Zaten Haziran'ın ortalarında gittiğin üniversitede zaten eğitimin akademik döneminin ortasında olacak. Yani hareketlilik yapmam veya gitmem böyle bir dönemde mümkün değil. 
hareketliye en başından katılman gerekiyor. Yani okul ne zaman başlıyorsa karşı ülkede Almanya'da örnek veriyorum o zaman gitmiş olman gerekiyor. Yani Mart ayı gibi, Şubat gibi ya da. Yani sen kendi okulunda aslında bahar döneminde Erasmus'ta gözüküyor olacaksın sadece bu kadar. Ayşe Şen, Hibe ne kadar? Hibeler yazıyor arkadaşlar ilanda detaylı bir şekilde ülke bazlı olarak. Oradan bakabilirsiniz. Kendi bölümünüz için yer açılmamış, açılmazsa aynı fakültede içinde başka bölümlere konuşulmaz. Ne kabul edilmemiş. Şöyle söyleyeyim arkadaşlar, kendi bölümünüz dışında başka bir bölümden gitmeyi planlıyorsanız, diyelim ki anlaşma yoksa o bölümle ilgili, hani ortak olan dersinin ortak olabileceğini düşündüğünüz başka bir anlaşmalı olduğumuz üniversiteye gidebilirsiniz. Ama kendi programınızda anlaşma varken başka bölümdeki programdan anlaşmaya gidemezsiniz. O da başkasının kotasını e, hakkına girmiş oluyorsunuz. O yüzden adil olmadığı için böyle bir şey yapılmıyor. Evet, başka sorusu olan var mı? Orada boşluk olması durumunda eğer uygunsa, ders eşleştirmeleri de mümkünse yapılabilir tabii ki Reyhan. Ve yeterli hani gitmeye de hak kazanmış olman gerekiyor tabii ki. Ya Valkan Fatima. Çap yapılan bölümle başvurabilirsiniz arkadaşlar. Çap yapan programdaki öğrenciler sadece bir tane programdan başvuru yapabilir. Diğer programı dondurmak zorunda. Geçimiz üniversitede hiçbir şey de denk tutmazsa okula yarım dönem zaman. Yani hiçbir şekilde denklik tutmazsa e, tabii ki okul uzar bir dönem ama bu tabii gideceğiniz üniversitedeki başarı durumunuza da bağlı. Gidip orada e, derslerden başarısız olmanız durumunda, hepsinden kalmanız durumunda da zaten otomatik olarak okulunuz uzar. Bu dersleri gelip buradan alırsınız. Yani biz mümkün oldukça zaten öğrenci lehine hareket etmeye çalışıyoruz tanımlılık denklik konusunda. Ama çok farklı böyle birbirinden alakasız dersler değilse mümkün oldukça derslerin tanınması konusunda yardımcı oluyoruz. Tabi kaldığınız dersleri de buradan alttan almak zorunda kalırsınız arkadaşlar. Her eksik ICTS'i buradan alırsınız. Her dönem 30 AKT'si almak zorundasınız. 30 AKT'sinin altında eksik ICTS'leri döndükten sonra burada tamamlamak zorundasınız. Seminerin kaydını YouTube link ile daha sonra Erasmus Office'in web sayfasında yayınlayacağız arkadaşlar. Burada burslu olan öğrenciler, yük tarafından burslu olan veya tercih bursu olan öğrenciler hiçbir şekilde etkilenmiyor arkadaşlar. Bursunuz aynı şekilde devam ediyor. Yük bursu olsun veya tercih bursu olsun burslarınız yatmaya devam ediyor. Başka soru var mı? Is there any question? Bu artık hani okulun senin uzamayı göze alıp almama durumuna bağlı ve başarı durumuna bağlı döndükten sonra tabii ki. Başka sorusu olan var mı? Is there any question? Hmm, okay, as I see, we don't have more question. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for listening.
I wish you good luck during the application and during the exam. I hope you will get high scores and uh, you will benefit, you will take this advantage. Okay? Take care of you. Bye-bye. Stay safe.